G'day, Professor Joseph Drew. In this video, I will tell you why rates will and must go up. Rates, I'm talking about local government taxes. It is inevitable because of a series of public policy mistakes that we've made over many years, and now we get to pay the price for those mistakes. So the first reason, and probably the most important reason, is really bad public policy making over many years. So we all know, if you watch my videos, you'll know about the bad decisions about rate caps for Victoria and New South Wales, where councils rates can only go up by a certain percentage, which is determined by relevant agencies. We've had bad amalgamation programs in Victoria, in New South Wales, and in Queensland, which actually increased the unit cost for local government, made it more expensive for them to do business. And then we've got a FAG grant program, financial assistance grants, which is money from the Commonwealth Government, which is allocated by state local government grants commissions. There is one piece of federal legislation, but each grant commission in every state is beating to their own drum. None of them are doing it properly. None of them are abiding by the legislation. And as a result, our most vulnerable communities in Australia our communities in low social de demographic areas and communities in rural and regional areas are missing out on money and that is financially crippling. The result of all this bad policy is that we must take in more revenue from our local government rates in order to mitigate the problems created by higher tiers of government. The next thing is inflation. I've made several videos about this. I was out there well before anyone else was saying that, of course, inflation is not going to be transitory. If you're going to monetize debt, give away free money, have supply shocks, lock people in the houses and destroy productivity, of course, you're going to get massive inflation and it's not going away and it hasn't peaked. It's nowhere near peaking and it's starting to get embedded. And that, of course, will make it more expensive for local government to do business. And a lot of the local government systems are about to negotiate new enterprise bargaining agreements. Their staff will be asking to be paid a lot more than 2.5% extra every year like they have for many, many years. They'll be wanting it, their pay to match inflation, which at the moment the RBA is saying could be 7%. I suspect it will be much more than that. That will add a lot to local government costs. It's typically 30 to 40 percent of a local government's costs. The other big contributor to local government costs are materials and contracts. Local governments are very energy intensive in terms of fuel, in terms of electricity. And we all know that electricity and fuel has gone up 20, 30 percent. That money has to come from somewhere. They're also very intensive in terms of materials such as concrete and steel. And they also are the things that are going up a lot in price. I've had engineers tell me that steel's gone up 50%, concrete's gone up 20 to 30%. And as a farmer, you can see from the background, I know that steel's gone up because I recently put in a uh, fence and I almost died at the price of the posts I'd had to buy. So if costs are going to go up, there's only a few options. One is you put your taxes up accordingly. Option number two is you slowly go broke. Option number three is you visit inequity on the next generation by racking up explicit and implicit debt. There, there, there is no magic bullet. If costs are going to go up, of course, local government costs also have to go up, i.e. local government rates. So the next reason, and this is a powerful reason for a lot of the pressure on local government's finances, is this fiscal illusion. In Australia, over the last three, four decades, we've been conditioned to think that all tiers of government are bottomless pits of money. You just keep asking for things and you get them for free and you never have to pay the cost. That's because we haven't been paying the cost. We've racked up trillions and trillions of dollars of debt over the last two decades at all levels of government. We haven't been paying the cost. We've been giving that cost to our children and our grandchildren, which is completely morally indefensibly, but it's also economically um, silly and dangerous there is a price to be paid. It's actually part of the reason for the inflation problem that I talked about in the previous slides, and we will pay the price. Now, it's much better 
for local governments to do the responsible and prudent thing now and bridge the gap between the expenditure they are making and should be making and the revenue they're bringing in. Bridge that gap now. It's much better to do that than to kick the can down the road, continue to kick it down the road like we've been doing for many years, like the federal governments are doing, like our state governments are doing, because eventually there is a price to be paid. And when it's paid, it will be a horrendous price because we will have compounded that gap between revenue and expenditure over many years. Much better to start paying the price now than to delay and pay a much bigger price down the track. Most local governments have very little fat to trim. Contrary to what you always hear in the media and you hear from state politicians in particular who are very keen for us not to look at their financial mismanagement, their $25 million Aboriginal flags on uh, harbour bridges and their multi-million dollar COVID quarantine facilities that aren't actually being used and they desalinisation plants that never actually run. They don't want us to look at them, so they keep talking about financial mismanagement in local government. Well, let me tell you, I've been working with local governments for decades. There is very little fat to trim. There is very little waste. Occasionally, local governments do stupid things, but they don't go buying multi-billion dollar submarines that they never get either like some of our other tiers of governments do, they're certainly much more frugal than our other tiers of government, much more accountable and much more transparent than our other tiers of government. So there is very little fat to trim. So this idea that people always want to do, is, it goes back to that Australian idea that's developed over the last few decades. Oh, we don't have to pay more. We'll just have debt for our next generation. Or the other word I always hear is, we'll just have greater efficiencies. Well. They're just not there. There is no fat to be trimmed. It's already been trimmed. There's very little in the way of efficiency. There's, there's things that you can do, but they're marginal. If you could save 1% on a local government budget, I'd be very surprised for most local government areas. There will be exceptions, of course. And the last point is that people forget that efficiencies are actually people. Everyone wants to blithely say, Oh, I don't want to pay more rates. We just need this local government to be more efficient. Well, let's start being honest when we talk about efficiency. Instead of saying we want our local government to be more efficient or we will be more efficient, let's say we want our local government executives and managers to sack people and suddenly have those people without a job and a career path and to also have less people at the local government, which means our service quality will and must deteriorate or we will be asking existing workers to do far more work and free overtime and the like because that is what efficiency actually is i'm not saying you can't make savings but people have it in their heads that you can save 10 15 20 percent in local government budgets it's it's just not it's a fantasy it really is as i say often you might be able to save one percent a few percent can you make those savings stick? Usually I find I look back at that council two or three years later and they've gone back to their old ways anyway. The efficiencies just aren't there at the scale that people think it is. So for all those reasons, the truth is that expenditure has gone up. We already had a gap between revenue and expenditure. Expenditure has gone up even more. So as I say, we don't have many options. The prudent thing to do is for your local government councillors to be looking at putting rates up significantly for the next financial year, or if it's too late for that one, for the financial year later. People want to kick the hand down the road and delay. My strong advice to you is don't do that. You will actually make the pain worse eventually. Eventually, the price must be paid. You can have a little bit of pain consistently starting now, or you can delay 10 years and have an awful lot of pain that you may not be able to handle. My strong advice is do not do the latter. Okay, I hope that's clarified the finances of local government for you. If this video can help anyone, if it can help your council, pop it up on your website. I don't care how you use it, as long as you're helping other people. It's under my own personal brand, so use it in any way that helps others. Please remember to subscribe. It helps me to defend my YouTube channel when people don't want me to put the truth out there in an accessible format for others. And please send it around to others because I know there's a lot of local governments really could do with a lot of this information I cover and they're just not consuming these videos. So thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.